Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I am working on something that's very epic and it's going to need a lot more time, I already know, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging, so we're, I'm just going to give you a little a little taste, a little snackums in between the main course. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys a bit more of my process of when I'm making something that I make multiple copies of, and so I wanted to show you guys how I make my mouse dragons. Now they're something that have been with me throughout my entire art doll career. I've redone them a few times and I'll go more in depth about that in the video but it's something cute it's something simple and it's spring themed and I can't wait for spring to be here so I thought why not it was the perfect little project so let's get started <laughs> So the first step in making this mouse dragon is going to be casting the head and feet in resin. Now for those questions that I know I'm immediately going to get, I used Smooth On Mold Star 15 Slow for my silicone. I made this mold myself from a sculpture that I sculpted using monster clay. And then I am using Smooth Cast 300 to cast and make a copy from my silicone mold. This resin cures within 10 minutes and it cures solid and white and so it's perfect for making multiple copies or something because of how quickly it cures and you can just pump out these pieces left and right. I, I really love this stuff and I highly recommend it. Now I also want to mention that I add my armature while it's curing so that way the resin will lock it in place and I don't have to drill a hole or, or make a hole somehow later on or attach it with like epoxy sculpt or anything. I ain't gotta worry about that. Just skip all them steps. We don't we don't need to make it more harder. Just stick the armature while it's curing, hold it in there for like a minute and you're good to go. <laughs> And once the head and feet are casted, it's not time to work on the armature. And for that, I use ball and sockets. And for anyone interested, I always have those links along with any other things I use in the description. Now that little bean has a little skeleton, it's now time to give him a body. And so for that, I'm going to be machine sewing as this is a type of species art doll that I make a lot of. So I've streamlined the process, which is why I'm not like showing you how I sculpt things or or how I do my normal quilt batting stages or anything like that. So if you're interested to see a more in-depth way of how to make a one-of-a-kind art doll, I would recommend looking at my other videos, but this is more of a showing you how I make things that I essentially mass produce, even though it's not like I'm still one person, can't really mass produce, but you know, we try and <laughs> So I have made a pattern, sewing pattern, and I just traced that on some minky and some faux fur, and then I'm going to be pinning it all together and running it through my sewing machine. And yes, I know, I'm being sacrilegious and leaving my pins in my pattern while I'm sewing them. But like, I promise I'm going like a lot slower than it looks and like the pins are so soft that like, if it does hit, nothing really happens. But I know I'm not supposed to, but I, I'm a newbie and it really helps to keep it together because otherwise my lines are all mismatched. So <laughs> like, I'd rather have that. So leave me alone, please. I, I'm trying. I mean, I'm removing the pins there. <laughs> Don't come for me. <laughs> but once I'm doing all the sewing, I want to make sure that I trim back the seam allowance just to make sure that when I'm posing the little mouse dragon that he's going to be nice and fluid and not stiff or, or inhibit any of his posing. So that's something you really want to keep in mind if you're ever seen sewing a body strictly for posing. I mean, I guess you want to do it whenever you're sewing, but mostly, strictly, importantly for when you're making things that pose so that they can still move. <laughs> and now it's time to insert his armature into his body. And you'll notice that I removed his little feet and I'm reattaching them there. It just made it a lot easier to reattach them after I slide the rest of the armature through his little armholes and not try to like force his foot in and then be frustrated that the fit is too tight and it won't work. So just remove that whole stressor by just 
removing his foot and then adding it back later. <laughs> I don't think that made any sense, but again, I don't, I don't know how you learn anything from me. I say it in every video because I don't understand, but I'm glad that you learned something. <laughs> if not, learn, learn the chaos method with me. Learn it. Let the chaos envelop you. <laughs> But now we are going to be sewing, because I can't use this machine sewing for everything. I won't really be able to turn it inside out if I did it that way. I also wouldn't be able to stuff his little chub chub body. So I leave his stomach unsewn so that way I can insert the armature through it and that way I can sew it. And as I am sewing it closed, I am adding a bunch of polyfill into his body and making sure I'm moving it around so it's everywhere that it needs to be and around his neck, in between his legs, around his tum tum, around his back, his booty booty. <laughs> so we want a little chunky chunky bean for this uh, mouse dragon. I love I love it when they're just little pudgy little adorable things that I can't imagine they fly around very well but they're adorable so <laughs> does it really matter does it? <laughs> Popping in for your not so daily reminder that if you have been thinking about a project be it art related like an art doll or a painting or something that you've just been wanting to do doesn't even have to be art related but you're just sitting there and you're talking yourself out of it and you're going I'm not good enough I'm not talented enough I can't even do that I don't have the time there's just no way I'm going to be able to do it so no I'm not even going to try hey hey you look at me in these eyes holes okay you look at me right here okay you can do the thing. I will shout it from the mountaintops that you can absolutely go and do that thing that you have been thinking about. I promise, while the rest of this video is playing, just go start it. Whether that's getting a materials list, go buying the materials, getting the materials together in one spot so you can get started with it. Grab that pencil, grab that piece of paper, grab that dish that you've been wanting to clean. I don't know, just go do it, I promise. You'll feel so proud of yourself for actually doing it. And please go drink water. Oh, I do have water this time. I have water this time. I have water. Go drink some water. And I love you. Also, I'd like to share with you these wonderful art pieces. Look at them. Aren't they so talented? Aren't they so pretty? Just mwah, mwah. If you have been thinking about some kind of project that you would like for me to see, be it an art doll you've made, fan art you've made, or just anything in general that you would like for me to see, please use the hashtag KP Tutorials so I can find it and potentially share it in my next video. Okay, back to the project. And once his body is all sewn up, it is now time to add some color to everything. And so I, because let me tell you, it was very hard for my camera to focus on anything. Just it being solid white with a black background, it was just like, I, I don't know what you want me to see. Details? I don't know them. I can't, I can't focus on any of this. Please, D you gotta do something about this. So I'm painting it. So not only can you see it on camera better, it's also so that it'll look a little bit more pleasing to the eye when it's all said and done. <laughs> but for all the painting, I am just going to be using some matte acrylic paints and you can use any type of paints that you want. Please don't think that you need expensive high-end brands or anything. You can go simple as folk art and you can go as fancy as Golden and Liquitex and and any other of the high-end brands out there, but you definitely don't need high-end stuff to still make art is what I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to motivate you because you can do it with whatever you got. I promise. <laughs> But while I am painting, I am going to ramble a little bit about my idea for this because I, as I'm sure I mentioned in the intro, at least I hope I mentioned in the intro and I didn't forget, <laughs> I am working on a really big beast and project. And so I always make these little cutie projects in between to kind of give you still content to watch, but make sure that I'm still gonna have time for the really big 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 boys but I've been really wanting to make my mouse dragons there's something I've had for a while I started them like way when I was early doing art dolls and I've redesigned them three times so far and this is the third time and this is like one of my favorite designs because they they they're so small so they go on with the mouse vibe in that way and then they have like little cute ears that remind me of mice and just like the first renditions of them had more cow vibes <laughs> Like their ears and they the, they just look like me <laughs> and I'll be I'll post some pictures around here so you can see what I'm talking about but I just I love these little beans so much and I always try to make it sound like I don't like the cutesy cutesy as much I'm all for the epic okay I always like the whimsical and epic things cutesies they're fine but they're whatever like no come on I know I love the cutesy things just as much as I love the epic stuff it's just a different aesthetic and it depends on what I want and in this moment I wanted to make an adorable little mouth look at those eyes 
He's just so cute. I just wanted to make an adorable little mouse dragon and it's springtime and I'm so tired of the cold. <laughs> I need some heat. So I wanted to make something that was cute and flowery because I cannot wait for that time <laughs> that I could just sit outside for hours on end and, and be absolutely comfortable and, and watch everything bloom and seeing how the little bees buzz around because they love the backyard. Like you get the height of spring and they're just bzzz everywhere. I love it so much. And so making this little guy was made me very, very happy is what I'm trying to say. Happy, happy bean. He's a happy bean. I'm a happy bean. <laughs> To gloss his eyes, I am using UV resin as I love how glossy and reflective it gets, but please only use this if you're old enough and that you can handle using resin. You know, you need respirators and gloves when working with this stuff. But if you don't have that option, I highly recommend Liquitex High Gloss Varnish as that also gives a really glossy reflective look if that's what you're going for. It is now time to give that fluffy mane some color. Before I start though, I'm going to be masking off the entire rest of the body in masking tape because I really want to make sure that I don't just spray pink and green absolutely everywhere. <laughs> but once that is done, it is now time to airbrush and for that I am using my dual action gravity feed airbrush which is just really fancy talk for a pressure controlled airbrush that takes paint in from the top. <laughs> There's also siphon airbrushes that take paint in from the bottom. It's all about preferences, but that is what I'm going to be using to airbrush the fur, a very light pale pink and green. And now I always say as long as, especially when you're doing really pale colors like this, as long as you're being really light handed with your airbrush, it is very, very unlikely to texture the fur at all, and it'll still leave the fur as soft as it was to begin with. It only gets more difficult to do that when you start doing really, really dark colors and things like that. And for those moments, I would recommend going over it with rubbing alcohol. I have a few older videos where I have talked about that. That just um, removes a little bit of the paint and gives a little bit of the softness back. So that's, you know, a thing you want to keep in mind. And look how clean and sharp those lines are and no mixing of the colors. I tell you, masking tape is absolutely essential, especially if you're going to be airbrushing. Just, ah, so nice and clean. And now because I have no self-control and I love doing this literally every of my art dolls, I'm going to be adding a little bit of flowers here and there, especially, excuse me, do you have to be itching with your collar? I'm trying to do a voiceover and talk about how much I like putting little foliage all over. You're not even paying attention to me. I'm talking to you. He whacked his tail at me, so heckin' rude. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to out myself that I like adding trinkets and things to art dolls because I have no self-control, but Stewie had to go and interrupt me. <gasps> you interrupted me again. <laughs> the audacity of my dog y'all <laughs> but I wanted to add adorable little flowers because it symbolizes spring excuse me please I'm just trying to tell the people about the spring and the flowers and how I liked it and so I glued them on <laughs> just I glued them on people I just just enjoy the rest of this <laughs> Editor Sarah made an adorable little flower crown out of just some floral wire, paper flowers, and hot glue. And it just looks so cute. And that's the perfect little touch on top of the little head. It's just so adorable. And after all of this, this little bean is all done and ready to frolic in the fields.
little bean just turn out absolutely adorable? I'm just so happy with how it looks. I just just makes me happy and it's all nice and warm and, and spring and I'm just so ready for it and I just can't wait and it was just the perfect little in-between project before the really big boy comes which he will be coming next week so I hope you're ready for him um, also I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons thank you so much for your support I really really appreciate it I don't know how you put up with me but I'm really grateful for it so I just wanted to give you a shout out and, and extend my thank yous to you I really really appreciate it and I appreciate you for watching this video and please if you happen to enjoy it maybe drop a like and ask and ask no it's me who's asking not you who's asking i'm asking for the subscribe not you but if you want to subscribe if you didn't i understand i'm kind of crazy i'm all over the place but if you wanted to you know it's right there i'm just okay i'm gonna go now okay bye <laughs>